We are live and on the air. Thank you for tuning in to Omni Bros Live on a Monday night. I'm Omni Dog from Omni Dog's Vault, joined as always with my co-hosts from a week in geekdom, Geo. Geo, how's it going, buddy? <laughs> I am doing well, everybody. Uh, I am happy to be here, and that is the quickest live <laughs> thing that I've ever seen. Wow, uh, we're live. Uh, God bless. Uh, hey, everybody. Happy to be here. And from uh, Gabe Infinity Watch, Gabe, Gabe, how's it going? What's up, everybody? What's going on, new scum? Um, yeah, you did start the show really, really fast on this. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the kind of shit I do. I do that in the middle of a conversation. Whenever I host, like when you're not here, just and I host, in the middle of the conversation, I'll just start it. And then it'll just no catch like the entire conversation. And Omar and Gio or Luis doesn't know that they were talking the whole time. But, uh, and of course, the uncanny Omar. Omar hey, everybody. it's going great. Happy to be here with you guys. Happy Memorial Day to you all and everybody. Happy Memorial Day to you. Thanks, and man. And happy Memorial Day to InStockTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. Uh, every quarter, it's kind of got to be coming up soon. We're coming to the end of May. Every quarter, there's an Omnibus Live discount code. Here in the United States, you order $50 or more in comic books, collected comic books. You get free shipping. How about that? Fabulous customer service. Fabulous packaging. That's InStockTrades.com. That's right. <laughs> Our buddies at InStockTrades.com, we love them. They Try tolerate we'll, us. We'll have a, a gift card giveaway next, or this Thursday, right? Um, This Thursday, yeah, because May yeah. 31st is Friday. Good yep. good job remembering. Mm -hmm. I got, yeah, I remember the end of the month. I'm pretty good at that. <laughs> Very <laughs> pretty good. good. I remember that. Um, there so how are we going to kick this off, man? We got uh, We got books coming out this week. I assume y'all read. How many, uh -huh. besides cookouts, which I assume that's what a lot of people do this day, and and then, you know, mem memorials and stuff like that. Do y'all have any movies you all watch? I have a couple of my friends that watch, like, uh, war movies, things like that, during Memorial Day. Well, I was in tradition, work, so I didn't do anything. You had to work today, huh? I'm sorry, Gio. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mm. Jess, my, you haven't, my, you haven't my worked wife... since 1985. What's that? I said, you haven't worked since 1985. <laughs> <laughs> my, and my wife was out of town for five days. I pick her up at the airport tomorrow. Oh, so nice. my daughter came over and we played some more Horizon Zero Dawn for the bulk of the day. That's, that's how we a, celebrated. That's an awesome yeah. way to celebrate it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's how we celebrated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, that's how we did it. What'd you do? Uh, not a lot. I read comic books. Oh, yeah. I read comic books. I read some comic books and uh, I watched some movies and we went grocery shopping. It was very low key. It was very low key. We did a lot of things this weekend, so we just wanted to stay home. Nice. Nice. What about you, Gabe? Did you do anything today? Not really. Uh, took the kids to the park. Read some comic books, cleaned the house. Maybe just a day off kind of thing. Mondays are my normal day off anyway, so nothing special. <clears throat> and plus, Memorial Day isn't like that big of a holiday where like people like travel too far or, or do anything crazy like that. So I know it's like a, a big a big thing here. Uh, like as far as lake, it's like the first day of going to the lake. Yeah, a lot of fishing. But if going you on. if you live like you know near an ocean, that's not a big deal to you but if you live in kentucky the butthole of america <laughs> it's a huge deal to go to the lake uh and i'm not saying I mean, uh, there are some beautiful parts of kentucky but okay so let's move on to reads right or or do you all want to do hauls what do you what do you guys want to do read sounds fine reads all right i got some got some stuff read there you go uh Let's see. I think I got one thing that I've been reading. 
Okay. Oh, and I'll tell you about it. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, oh, Annihilation Conquest, right? No, close. No, that's War, it's that's War, War of Kings. Kings Prelude, Road to War of Kings. Road to War of Kings. Road so you already War finished King. Annihilation Days. Conquest. Right. And I'm, uh, I was supposed to review this with Faria yesterday on my channel, but of course I was having code problems with uh, stupid Google Hangouts, which will work for Omnibros Live, but we couldn't get it to work for my, our cha my channel. So... Um, I, I stopped um, reading it. I got about, I don't know, I'm about two thirds of the way through with this. Um, and uh, I love it so far. I love it even more than Annihilation Conquest. And of course, mm. it's just, what? <laughs> wow. it's got a lot of Inhumans okay. action, which I'm really digging. Digging this is interesting. Yeah. I'm digging this in humans action. I'm digging the stuff that happens on Earth. I'm digging the Guardians of the Galaxy action. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, yeah. give, you I'll give you that. The Nova stuff, the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. That stuff's amazing. That. I love the Nova stuff. Yep. Um, Where he has the last Nova left. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I'm really digging. Um, don't, don't you say it. Next <laughs> X-Men. No, no, the X-Men stuff was kind of weird. All right, good. Good man, good man. <laughs> Here's some of that good in human stuff, though, right here. I was digging this. Yeah, uh, that, that X-Men stuff was kind of, uh, yeah. kind of, kind of weird. Trash. <laughs> People love it, though. People love Vulcan. That's the Vulcan uh, stuff, yeah. I was gonna say. Yeah, the Vulcan stuff. Um, I will say that this omnibus, I'm surprised you love it, because a lot of people have an issue with it, because... It wasn't planned, right? Like, whereas Annihilation and Annihilation Conquest, <laughs> those stories uh, were or meant to be were meant to be one event, right? Hey, so they I can led tell into this was sort of slapped together. I can that's tell kind that. of disjointed, and yeah. they're like, okay, we need to borrow. Like, I mean, there's stuff in there from Secret Invasion. Yeah. There's stuff in there from Decimation. There's stuff in there that you. Mm -hmm. It wasn't planned for the X Men to one day go into space and 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 fight off the, you know, meet up with the Guardians of the Galaxy. It's the and, Infinity War of yeah. of the Infinity Gauntlet that that is to. Uh, uh, yeah, that, I, I I agree with that. Yeah, in the way that, that it's collected. But no, and, and the fact that the main it. story, mm -hmm. the main story was supposed to be just the one story. It was supposed to be just Annihilation, but I did so good. It spawned more. Mm -hmm. more ancillary titles and, and more spinoffs and crossovers and stuff like that. That's the same thing that happened with Infinity Gauntlet. It did Infinity Gauntlet, and then it did so well, it was so popular, then, then almost forced, they had to do Infinity War, and then that turned into Infinity Crusade. So it's just one of those things where one good product got strip mined over and over again. That's kind of where War of Kings is. It's not exactly a strip mining event because it's actually a really, really good story. But it's one of those things that wasn't planned out. It just kind of came at the last second. It's not terrible, but it's also not yeah. awful. Like brightest day was that spawned out of Blackest Night and ruined the Green Lantern storyline for years. <laughs> fight me, fight me. I'm I'm not going to fight you. I'm also only two thirds of the way done, so I still okay. have a third a of, of to it go. to go. Uh, still, uh, and I believe I have the Google Hangouts thing figured out. I hope. Um, I think, I think you and, figured it out. I think you and I figured it out. Um, so in a couple Sundays, I'll read um, War of Kings, and I'll do the review for this book and War of Kings on the same day. I um, So here, here's a confession. Oh, wait. Are we supposed to have Tyler Blunt on? Didn't we say we were going to have Tyler on? I thought you did, but I just assume he wasn't. He couldn't make it because you said like nobody oh, said anything. He said he was going to be late. Wait, let me send you the link, uh, T. Blunt. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was going to be late, and there he is. I. Yeah, this, to this was late, totally, totally like... planned by Jess. No, totally. this is me doing a bad job. It's I like suck. Like a college course, if you're late, you're not coming in. Yeah, I <laughs> suck. I'm sorry. I'm sending you the hangout link. Uh, Tyler, so you can join us. Tyler's our tax man. You can't not invite him. Yeah, sorry, Tyler. I, I totally spaced. I yeah. forgot that you were supposed to join us. Um. Uh. Yeah. So we're gonna have a guest, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler's supposed to, to join us. 
Tyler, yeah. I sent you the link in Facebook, so join us now. Blandhost27, right. Polly P is right. We need Blandhost27 to join us. Blandhost27. We're, we're Cycle Cleveland. That's what he used to call him. <laughs> is that Cycle Cleveland? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he's still on his way. I figured oh, I was just banned. Well, okay, so good. Tyler will be signing in soon. Yeah, I thought he was said he was going to be a little bad. bit late. Okay, well, you sign in when you can, T. Uh, T. Blunt. I put him in timeout. <laughs> we uh, okay. So <laughs> confession time, and I know I'm not the only one that has done this, but I had the Guardians of the Galaxy issues. I bought mm -hmm. the standard edition trade paperbacks. I bought the omnibus mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy. And then when I noticed that War of the Kings came out, I was like, well, shit, they might actually collect Guardians of the Galaxy and another one if they could do a prelude to War of the Kings. And sure enough, they hell, as hell did. And I'm like, oh, God, this will be the fourth time I buy this story. But I love that story so much that I quadruple dipped. Quadruple dipped? Oh, yep. On, on Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy? Of the Galaxy? Okay. I love that. That cosmic event, man, made me so happy. It brought. It's it reminded great. me of my times reading Uncanny X Men as a kid and New Teen Titans. So I was like, "Yeah, I'm, it's worth it." I I love the story so much. So that's that's the one that's in this book. That's, the Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy one that's in this book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm right in the middle of that right now. So what happens is, unfortunately, don't say anything, you sucker. Well, it's not going to ruin anything. You know, like as far as story wise, is that towards the end of that run they started pulling artists and kind of putting not so great artists on the book no. so it had that going for it and i think that's you know it, it happens with marvel usually unless you're a big name you don't really get to choose who your artist is right they just kind of mail you somebody like i don't know that they drew from a fucking uh <laughs> I want to say not not even deviant art, but like a, <laughs> some kind of talent pool at a convention or something. I don't know, but unfortunately, that's what happened towards the end of that run, and that kind of sucked because that story is still phenomenal, but the art is kind of like, what's going on here? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so. Well, I'm enjoying this book a lot. Yeah, it kicks off awesome because uh, Paul Pelletier, right? He's the artist on it at first. Yep. He's an amazing artist. I love that dude. Uh, sure. I think Brad Walker starts doing some. Brad Walker, stuff. you're right, and he's top notch too. Paul yeah. Pelletier, Brad Walker, Wes Craig, Carlos Man Magno. What is it? Magno. <laughs> Ma sure, what Magno. <laughs> Whatever. Say it with authority. Magno, <laughs> Magno, 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 man. Yeah, I and, want and, to and, be and a freaking Magno man. And Freddie Alonso is right. The art picks up again with the, the Thanos imperative. But that's the for that what imperative? Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit what Jim Starlin calls him. <laughs> you know, know the, you the creator know. of Or Thanos. what the entire Avengers call him. Or anybody else in this world. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I still have friends that call Magneto Magneto. Like, I swear to God. And I'm like... No, that's not right. But I guess it kind of makes sense because he is a magnet with a no attached. I get that. I, I hear Submariner every day in my life. Oh, you must. Yeah, Submariner. that. Yeah, I can comic see. book shop, right? Yeah, is it I usually it older day. guys? No. Well, it's, it's everybody. Like that everybody. is a that's a misnomer that has infected every generation. Submariner. Yeah. Submariner. Submariner. Yeah, I huh. hear Submariner. Uh, Sankovich, when people talk about Bilson Kevich. Oh, that man's, I'm sure that man, that's, that's yeah, completely you know normal. That, yeah. <laughs> that man's, these are just misnomers you hear all the time, you know. Up there with my boy Lane Wayne, you know, yeah. as far as like yeah. names that get mispronounced. <laughs> what did anybody else read? I read a couple of books. I read a couple of books. Uh, I am reading this for tomorrow's old reader, new reader, and this is Craven's Last Hunt. Nice. Only six issues long, but this epic is so awesome because it has Spider-Man versus Wolverine, which is one of my favorite issues. It's got the wedding issue, so it's got the annual 20. Um, and then it has Craven's Last Hunt. So if you don't own this epic, you should. This is an amazing epic. 
That's just yeah, they, they really put that together really well. Especially yeah. like the thing with the storyline where it's it's Spider Man versus Wolverine in a wedding. But yeah. when you read it, because I, I I have that one also. When you read it, it, the wedding is super forced. Like it's oh right before that, <laughs> Peter was dating. Uh, uh, I forgot I forgot her name, but he was dating somebody, and they were they had a long relationship going on for a while. And then all of a sudden, next issue, bam, they break up, and he gets back with Mary Jane, and they get married. It's like an immediate response to I, I to think that whole event. Of, um, well, I know the story is thirty years old, but I also don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't read it. But that's because of the death of the somebody, the friend, his friend, who mm -hmm. was a villain. That's all I will say. I think that probably had <laughs> something to do with it. Uh, but anyway, yes, this epic is quite amazing. If you have not picked this up. Uh, I am read Spider King, which I will be reviewing on my channel. I'm surprised. I'm sure this is a Jess book. Jess, right? Oh, you read this? No, I haven't. What is that? I have no. a Kyle stack here. Uh, wow. It's a uh, one off. It's called Spider King. Uh, if you liked Lake of Fire, it is very similar, except instead of Crusaders, it's um, here. Let me show you guys some of the artwork. It's a lot more cartoonish, though. Instead of Crusaders, it's Vikings that find a spaceship. Right, you have two opposing forces uh, on these Viking clan, yeah. and when they find this spaceship, like one of the aliens takes over one of the opposing uh, clans' leaders, and they slaughter everybody. So he becomes the Spider King, and then the other clan, the other Viking clan, found finds weapons, uh, like alien weapons. So they have swords and guns and stuff. So it's very gory. It's very cartoony, but I like the way it's drawn. Kind of reminds me a little bit of like perhaps uh, some of the Cartoon Network kind of art style from the late aught or early aughts. Sorry, awesome. but I dig it. It's fun. It's a fun story. It's a little goofier than Lake of Fire, whereas Lake of Fire is really serious. This is has more of a lighter tone, even though there's people getting body parts hacked and slashed. <laughs> awesome. I really dig it. I like the artwork too. I think these it's written by two Vikings and drawn by a Viking, just based on the names. I'm not even going to try to butcher their names, except for maybe uh, yeah, Josh yeah. Van. <laughs> I can I can do that. I can do Josh Van. I got that one. Um, and then I read Port of Earth Two. Oh, how uh, is that? I've got both I those books. Love Port of Earth One. I thought oh, it was good. great. Very uh, underrated. Do you know the premise of that of the book series at all? Uh, just pick no. it up on a whim. I, for uh, I forget now. Distant future. I did a review on my channel. I'll send you a link. You know what? I'll send you a link, Jess. You can, you can watch you can watch my review. No, I'm just How about kidding. if you just read it, <laughs> Or you can read it. <laughs> I'm just going to give you the premise, man. The premise is cool. Aliens in the future decide to make uh, part of San Diego uh, port. Or oh, alien okay. Ships, right? And cool. all they require yeah. is water, our water supply. They, they, not all, just some. In exchange, they give us weapons and goodies. And there's the Earth Defense Force that keeps aliens intact. Like, they're not supposed to be away from the port, but shit always happens. And this takes a turn, like a really cool turn, so I'm not going to spoil it for you. Port of Earth is great. I really, really liked it. Okay, and book good. two reads just as good as book one. So there's my review for that. Uh, and this, the other read, where is it? Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, it's right here. This came uh, yeah, it's from Kyle. Have you guys read this? This is Jonathan Hickman. Mm -hmm. Dying in the not. Dead. I didn't even know this book existed. It's on my uh, wish list. It is. How do I put it? Uh, quite amazing. I really like this. It's I, I never hear anybody really talk about it. So it's on your wish list because it's Jonathan Hickman? Is that why? What's that? Is it on your wish list because it's Hickman? Yeah. So hold on, let me show you. Is that Some like of... a one in all, one in all story? Like a one or... shot? Yeah, yeah. A this is shot? a one shot. Yeah. Oh, it is a one shot. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. That's why I was wait. I hadn't ordered it yet. I thought I was waiting for book two. At least I read to me like a one shot. It doesn't say to be continued or anything. Oh, okay, good. Maybe I'll order it tomorrow with the uh, saga. Ooh. Let's see. So I want to show you the art, but there's a lot of things I don't want to spoil because it reminds me a lot of a young Steve McNiven. This stuff is great. Uh, Bodenheim, I think. Yeah, Bodenheim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Oh, so man. great. Detailed, and he does his own inks, but it reminds me of, like, old-school McNiven, when Dexter Vines used to ink his stuff. A little bit. Like, I see where you're coming from. Right before uh, he did Old Man Logan. When he was doing, you remember Marvel Knights 4? Yeah, of course I remember Marvel Knights yeah. 4. Yeah, so, like, that kind of stuff. Just so much detail into each That panel. Marvel Knights 4, just to step off real fast, Steve McNiven draws the most beautiful, invisible woman in that book. I agree. I love it's that book. Best, best ever. That's, that's the book that made me th- say, man, I don't know who that guy is, but that kid's going places. <laughs> and he did. Yeah, you can see that this guy's inspired by McNiven. But yeah, in the way that it's detailed, his layouts yeah. and stuff like that, I love it. And McNiven's it, obviously like, you know, inspired by Bolin. Who's obviously oh, yeah. inspired by Joe yeah. Kubert. So there's, but, there's, I mean, there's all the, those kind of details in there. Just the character design, like, you know, this dude right here. So yeah, you'll enjoy this, Jess. Mm. The Dying of the Dead. Looks great. It's it's solid. Solid. Like, did he this was never finished? I know it was like the dude like I just like, thought it ended. Issue, an issue took like two years to come out like it was really badly scheduled like hickman fell off it for a while which i feel bad for that boldenheim guy I don't know oh it was hickman's fault i, re- I yeah. really thought if it was anybody it was uh i mean it's gory as shit uh towards the beginning but uh i yeah. really thought it was uh bodenheim that no. because of the detail that he puts into his art no i just see uh, even hickman came out i'm pretty sure just he was just so busy things fell through same thing with secret he was doing at the same time uh, Seems like he Manhattan gets a lot of projects, ideas, right? Like that. Yeah, yeah. Manhattan Project suffered from that too. Yeah, I think. We're, did we ever get a two point five hardcover? I don't know. I don't even know. Honestly, I didn't know they made enough Dying in the Dead to make a trade paper. Back. Yeah, they did, man. Solid. I, thought, I swore only like three or four issues came out. So where it kind of ends, I was like, ah, okay, I guess it's over. That makes it's sense. almost as bad as a uh, you know non-player. You remember non-player? I do no. remember non-player. I don't. Yeah. Uh, Who was it, that? Uh, Nate Nate Simpson Nate Sampson, mm-hmm. um, great great book. It's 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 a really cool VR uh, internet kind of gaming world. That you're, it's 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 very much how um, uh, Player One was, where it's, somebody's living in video game world kind of thing. But he would do an issue, and then the next issue would come out four years later, and I and then it's I think only three issues are out, and it's taken him like ten years to do it or something stupid like that. Uh, but it's a beautiful dude. It, it's like one of the most gorgeous looking books. Like, if nobody knows what non player is, look up non player, look up the art in there I from Nate Sampson, Nate Simpson, whatever his name is. It, it's, it's it's amazing, dude. I don't mind finding books, I, I, I don't mind finding out about books like that after it's all said and done. They can spend 20 years doing it, and if I don't know anything about it until somebody right. is like, Here you go, and I'm like, Awesome, I didn't have to spend 20 years. Waiting for this book to come out. Yeah. And just read it in one sitting. Like, That's no, one nice, complains. Right? no one complains. Right. That Dark Knight nobody knows, four, nobody, right. to come out. nobody you know, knows. Nobody knows the, about that still. <laughs> or, you know, the infamous issues that came out before I mean, Image was notorious for that. Like issue six before issue five because of a yeah. different team on it. Actually, Wolverine, Old Man Logan was like that, remember? They went on ahead and decided to say, hey, we'll just finish this in a giant size Wolverine issue. Yeah, yeah. Let's just keep going with Wolverine. Yeah, that's the creative took, team. Took forever to come out, too. I remember. Yeah. So anybody that reads it in collected editions, they have no idea how long those issues yeah. really took. Or even out. Civil War. Uh, that was a yeah. That was a they huge pushed problem. back issues seven and eight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a huge problem, but nobody talks about that anymore. So it's kind of redundant, and nobody cares. And it's generational. True. So. Uh, yeah, that's uh, all I read. That's great, man. Apparently, there is a Dying and the Dead uh, compilation coming out in December. There's more? Yes. Yeah. I'm looking at it online. There's no way they did that many says, do anything else. <laughs> uh, December, well, I'm guessing the date is wrong, but it says December 31st, 2019, with the first 10 issues. And your book, I think, only has, has the first, first three. Yeah, this is very small. It was a fast read, and it was freaking awesome. Wait a minute, there's, so there's a volume two of this? According to Amazon, they're going to release a, the whole thing, 10 issues, on one big trade. With that with that date, that's usually a, a placeholder date because it's the last Yeah, that's what I was year. thinking too. Um, and, it's probably uh, just an old solicitation. And they I'll take some more. This is awesome. Yeah. The last issue that was released was back in April of last year. <laughs> what issue so, was that? Aisha... Uh, uh, number nine. nine. Almost there. 
Almost oh. one more issue. Almost there. The, How many issues are in that book, uh, Omar? Ten. Oh, there's only three. No. Like it's issue nine was canceled. Chapters. Oh, it was canceled. It was canceled. Well, um, shit. Back to square one then. <laughs> <laughs> what a mess. Issue issue eight was canceled. I'm looking it up on Diamond right now. Oh my god. Uh, issue seven was canceled. Uh oh. Uh oh, you're being a boner shrinker of this conversation. <laughs> issue six it was canceled. Off, it started off good. Oh dear. Looks, yeah, that series is dead. Issue okay. five canceled. Yeah. Dude, but this go pick it up. It's awesome. Uh, okay, it's, I will. Even with the cliffhanger, I was like, yeah, I, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a great book, but yeah, they never they do have a Dying and Dead special edition trade paperback. It's oh it's canceled. <laughs> uh no. How many issues are in that book? Oh my three. Okay, so they got that this actually already came out. Uh they have a Dying in the Dead special edition trade paperback. Special edition? Yeah, it's uh it came out uh May 2017, and it collects the first three oversized issues. So it's a trade paperback of the first three issues, and it comes up the same day that issue four came out. I bet that's what this is, then. So then, then they did another trade paperback of one, two, three, and four, which is what you have, right? <laughs> Man, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Damn it, I hate finding out about things like this. I didn't know that. I didn't need to know those issues existed. It's yeah. over. This is good, good enough for me. Wait, so there's one through four? Apparently there's another trade he said that collects one through four. No, it collects one through three, and it was and it came out the day that issue number four came out. Oh, that's what this is. Is that what that is? Yeah. So you need to get issue so, four now also somewhere. Because Gabe is issue... Man, that took a lot longer to uh, figure out. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Any, what else? What did you guys read? <laughs> uh, well, <clears throat> I read uh, this thing, Aquaman uh, Suicide Squad Sink Atlantis, uh, it, because I am getting ready to do a Rebirth Part 2 video on Aquaman, because I haven't done it in a while. And this was actually a ton of fun. It's a very, very, very simple story, but it's pretty... <clears throat> it's pretty cool. It has uh, the uh, Atlantis has risen, uh, and it's now part um, of, you know, part of the surface uh, on Earth. And uh, the governments don't like it, and they send in the Suicide Squad to plant a bomb inside and sink Atlantis. So uh, Arthur and uh, Mira, who's just been appointed as queen, she is going to uh, assemble sort of a, a suicide squad of her own to uh, get rid of uh, Task Force X and knock everybody uh, out of Atlantis. It's, it's, it's very simple. It's only four issues. It reads pretty quickly, but the art in it is pretty great as well. Fun. Who wrote yeah. that? It's a combination of Rob Williams and Dan Abnett. Oh, okay. So it's, uh, I don't, you can't read it by, by, uh, by itself, but I do recommend reading the whole Abnet run because it follows what happened uh, before uh, this volume because this is, although it's not numbered, this is actually volume seven of the Aquaman run from uh, Rebirth. Mm. So, yeah. And I'm getting ready to uh, go into Drowned Earth so I can finally finish that uh, video that I'm planning. So, yeah. Nice. Very cool, man. Sweet. All right. Was that it, Jill? Mm-hmm. All right. Sweet. Uh, nothing special with me. I'm still getting through Transmetropolitan uh, First Absolute Edition. I'm on the last couple issues now. Or actually, I think I'm on the last issue because this has the I Hate It Here uh, printed columns as well, and that's the last part that I'm on. Um, and then after that is all the, uh, supplemental stuff that I, I really want to dig into. I really want to dig into the scripts 
and see how that kind of look, goes with the, the panel layouts of the storytelling. Um, just a lot. That, that's what I love about these absolutes is most of the time the absolute edition is, is the better edition. You get a lot more supplemental stuff in the back, you know, a lot of behind the scenes material. So, but yeah, so I'm almost done with this and then I'm going to move on to uh, volume two. Uh, I've just been really busy and I've read a lot, but that's my uh, that's my readathon for right now. Will be those three absolute editions of Trans Metropolitan. I just got a message from uh, Tyler. He's setting up, and um, we'll be on in a minute. Cool. Nice. I hope he knows about the dying light or the dying in the dead. <laughs> and he's ready to talk about. It. <laughs> yeah, he can add to the. He's like, oh, man, I loved all four issues. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so did everybody haul anything? I hauled. Uh, I hauled. I hauled. A stack. A stack. Cool. Yeah, I kind of got, got a little bit of a stack, too. All right. <laughs> I got mine out of the way. I didn't haul anything because the <laughs> package I ordered still hasn't arrived. Yay. Geo. <laughs> You know, if anybody ever complains again about in stock trades and shipping or just any <laughs> services here, I always think of you. Is you're like, hey guys, my package from December hasn't shown up, and you're and you're so sweet about it, and it's like you know May. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, usually it's like three weeks, and I'm like, well, it hasn't arrived. Whatever. What body part are we seeing on Tyler Blunt right now? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? What yes. cheek? Hello, Shazam. <laughs> he has his own intro. He says Shazam. <laughs> How did you let him get away with that? We're going to get copyright infringement. Demonetized. That's strike one. Demonetized. 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 Your channel is demonetized. Copyright. Thanks it's a lot. Your paycheck is being job. cut this month. How's it well, going, no, man? Wait. Good. I have been longing for the day to be on screen with the man who has been on screen with Chris Claremont. And that day is today. Oh, oh, you mean Gabe? Because he has met him several yeah, times. Yeah, absolutely. Who did you think I was talking about? No, I'm obviously talking not me or Gio. <laughs> Fucking Puerto Rican. Or at least that's the way you see us. Obviously, Gabe. <laughs> well. How's it going, man? Good. I'm, I'm here for my six-part interview. I'm excited about it. Ooh. Um, nervous. I don't know what kind of questions are going to be asked, but I was told that um, – there might be some partial nudity by Jess. Jess told me that. I don't not that he was going to be partially nude, but I mean I'm not against anything happening. I don't know. Shazam! <laughs> you are out of your mind. Oh, I never shit. said anything about nudity. You're the one that said pants <laughs> optional, not yeah, me. Yeah, that's why I'm not wearing pants today. Me Thank either. You, Nobody is. I was I'm told. I'm ducking it right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, shit gets real when Tyler turns that. Head on backwards. Yeah, let me just tell you, my wife is in here. And, yeah, and that's uh, going over the top. <laughs> anything can happen. All right. Uh, you and Jess both audience. had your wives out of town. Yeah, that's we've right. been talking. We've been doing a lot of stuff. I mean, yeah. oh, all right. Wow. We, okay. yeah. we had a very fun interview together on Saturday when our wives were out of town. We talked about out of print books. We did. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got a compliment earlier in the chat. That was great that somebody, Jesse Say What, specifically said Aww. that he liked our uh, uh, our little out-of-print book chat. And Jesse's those, a sweetheart. Everybody knows that. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, this is Tyler Blunt, also known as Blanthost27. He is uh, an excellent, excellent friend of mine, and everybody else is in the chat. And uh -huh. Tyler, we have just gotten done, and you can take it away we just got done talking about what books we've read this week have Ooh. you gotten any books read yeah. this, this week this is uh the pissing contest part of the show here well what then what do you got what do you you're have gonna been? be pretty impressed when i tell you about the uh paw patrol anthology that i've been reading <laughs> right. let me tell you volume get two the, is get this piece here. of crap off the show right now <laughs> when sky shows up you're like what in the world who saw that coming um, I've been reading, I've been, uh, one of my friends asked me to do a podcast with him to read through all of Marvel now, which has oh. turned out to be quite a lofty goal. <laughs> Week one, oh my God. 
week I one, I already fell that. behind on issues, but I've read. So this past week, I caught up with the very beginning of Marvel now. So like Wolverine and the X Men, um, X Men. I think it's like it's Legion, but it's like X Men Legacy, Legacy something something. Yeah, Legacy stuff. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, Uncanny Avengers, and one other book that escapes me right now. That's how forgettable it was. So just the first few arcs of the oh, it was like A plus X consequent. I don't know. Oh, dude. oh, the aftermath issue. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. aftermath. Yeah, hey, but that's where that yeah, cool t-shirt I don't want to read a comic from. book that's really just a math problem. That sucks. Right. <laughs> that, that's where that cool t-shirt comes from, though. The yeah, Cyclops, just the Cyclops was right. Yeah, he was I like some that punk t-shirt. kid. Some punk kid's gonna be here, and he's gonna be wearing a Cyclops was right t-shirt, and I'm like, I'm that punk kid. It's me. <laughs> right off the presses, man. As soon as that that issue came out, people were printing t-shirts. So good. So yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a good read. Some of it's been good, some of it's been confusing, and some of it's been terrible. Legion's been my favorite by far, though. It's Legion's it's great. fantastic. Yeah. That's that's written by Cy Spurrier. Spurrier. Okay, I was gonna let somebody else pronounce it. Thank you for taking the bullet. <laughs> Spur- <laughs> Spur- I don't Spur- embarrass Spur- myself in front of Tyler. This is our first time on camera <laughs> together. <laughs> oh gosh, this crossover is getting awkward. Uh. Do you haul anything, man, besides Paw Patrol? Just those Paw Patrol gummies, man. You know, life's... Uh... Oh, they're not even toys. They're gummies? No, they're gummies. I'm eating them right now, actually. This <laughs> is my kids, uh, I assume. This is my pre-dinner snack. Oh, yeah. you're living like a single man. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I truly am. I'm going to put in some Totinos and ramen. Yeah, nice, yeah. I'm going to eat cereal for dinner tonight. <laughs> it's great. Somebody asked me about blue Dr. Pepper in the chat, and I'm going to try some after the show, so... Blue Dr. TBD. Pepper, that's a thing? TBD. That's not my Dr. Dr. Pepper. No. <laughs> Hashtag not my Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, bless Dr. your Pepper. intestines. Ooh. I, I, don't, I don't trust anything blue because it reminds me of Windex. Anything mm-hmm. liquid, right? Yeah. Like, I can't drink it. Like Gatorade and all that stuff, I can't drink blue Gatorade. You never had an Adios motherfucker? What, Adios motherfucker? Is that yeah. an actual it's drink? drink? Is it yeah. a drink? Yeah. No, I've had a purple nurple. <laughs> I think we've all had waffle? those. An and the drink. Uh, is there a drink called Awful Waffle? You don't know about the Awful Waffle? That's the belly thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I watched Nick. Was it Nick Nick Jr. or whatever the hell it was called? Nickelodeon? Nickelodeon? Sure, Nickelodeon. Yeah, that was a Salute Your Shorts. Salute Your Shorts, that's Ooh. right. Yeah. Camp on Awana? We hold yeah. you in our hearts. Yeah, ugly, ugly. Yeah. I remember Donkey Lips. That's, that's, a, that's a counter's it. name. Yeah. And and the kid with red hair, he was in Terminator Two. I remember that. That's oh, he was about that, it. in that RK scene really fast. Yeah, that was it. I've never had an adios. <laughs> what kind of Mexican no? is he? I'm the kind of Mexican that's like way south of Mexico. <laughs> No, oh, it's, it's, a, it's an actual drink, but it's a no, it's no, like no. A, Make a, havoc a is asking me if, oh. what, if I have it. <laughs> yeah, because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a. The drink, the color of the mm-hmm. drink looks just like Windex. So no, I've never had it. All right, next time we're together, about. we're all drinking it, Jess okay. included. No, 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 no. <laughs> we'll, we'll translate <laughs> it for you. It's goodbye. I know that. <laughs> Be goodbye Leave sobriety for me. <laughs> Leave Jess and myself out of those. Devilish drinks of yours. Yes, forget it. All right, fine. You two can drink your yoo-hoos or whatever. The yeah, hell you drink. Me, 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 and o- <laughs> me and Omar just take shots of Gorilla Fart. All about that. Yoo-hoo, that sounds great. good. Yoo-hoo looks like dirty mop water. All right, who is no? That, that's what horchata looks like. Also dirty mop water. <laughs> yeah, it looks like dirty bath water, dude. I can't stand. I drink that, water or liquor. That's about it, guys. And cranberry juice. <laughs> With bourbon. Well, welcome to Omni Drinks Live, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so halls. Jess, you said oh. you had a massive haul. So did Gabe. Who wants to go next? Uh, I'll go. I got a Kickstarter in, and it w- was ordered so long ago. I, I have no <laughs> idea what it's about. It's called Love those. <laughs> uh, Atlantis wasn't built for tourists. Uh, Circle Pit Press. I. I it's I don't even know what it's about. I can't remember now. I'll have to look it up on Kickstarter. It was so long ago, but it, it you know finally came out, so that's good. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, I, I actually got asked about Kickstarter by my wife uh, before she left. She was going over the visa bill. And she says, what's going on with Kickstarter these days? And I said, oh, apparently some of these books are actually coming to fruition. Uh, sorry about that. I, I was like, bam, 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 three in a row suddenly came to life. Um, I, I, I want to see a video of like, like a hidden video when your wife is like asking you these questions. I want to see you sweat, bully. Uh, uh, that kickstart, that in stock trade thing. I just want to see you f just flop. <laughs> uh, It'd be funny to do it behind like, a <laughs> hidden camera show. That Kickstarter one uh, could have gone horribly wrong. Fortunately, she she accepted what I said that they were all ordered at different times and they just happened to come in at the same time. They were all approved at the same time. Uh, you need an is... actually friend, right? About that. Time. But <laughs> yeah, I can't really steps out of the closet and it's like actually, Patty. <laughs> it's true though. They they all they all get funded at the same time. They were all they all came up at different times and they all just got funded at the same time. Uh, so she bought that and and there was no argument. Fortunately. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, some scumbag recommended Lake of Fire to me, and I said, okay, I will get that book. It sounds good. He I highly love it. Yeah, he highly recommended it to me. So I'm going to read it. This looks really good. And this looks good. It's a book by Greg Rucka. I love Greg Rucka called The Old Guard. Yeah. Rucka, Rucka. yeehaw. Yeah, uh huh. That was my reaction too. Uh, something like that. Um, so this got high marks from uh, Faria, and um, I don't. Uh, this is a fairy tale of blood and bullets. I have no idea. This is a blind buy just based on its Greg Rucka. Uh, so I'm up for that. I got Yuzagi Yojimbo Saga Eight. Mm. Yep, same here. Got to be done. What's yeah. your number? What's your number, Jess? Mine, uh, I got number one. Uh -huh. Seriously? No. That Mine's never number happened. two. I was like, that's amazing. That goes, that goes to Stan, right? I assume. <laughs> I'm sure Stan doesn't bitch about, oh, man, I got 54 again. Who are the <laughs> I got three other assholes that made this book besides me? He's trying to trade for it on the message boards. <laughs> no, I think there is a guy that trades a specific number. Like, he's trying to collect the number. Of every one of those. Raleigh Smith said he's going for seven twenty nine. Oh, that's silly. That's awesome. Well, one day they're going to make like a se only seven hundred and twenty eight copies. And he's be <laughs> well, screwed. that's the problem with number one, right? Like that's why it's so limited. They only did what seven hundred and fifty, and everything else was fifteen hundred. It's ridiculous, but whatever. Uh, then I got a really thick Thor book. Yes. Which is a big thick one. Nice. Yeah, I think it was large, man. I was yeah, they're really gonna resolicit that as an omnibus later mm -hmm. on. <laughs> you're, you're gonna rebuy it. Yeah, no question. So I'm pretty pumped on that one. Then I got Superman, Family of Steel. Sadly, it's probably the oh. last deluxe, which is really bumming me out because I love these deluxes. Um, and I'm still holding out hope. That I will someday read my Valiant books. So here's Imperium. You haven't read any of them? I started in January of 2017 and read for about oh six God. weeks. And of course, I've forgotten everything I've written, read everything I've read. So I need to go back and start over. But I liked a lot what I read. And so I plan on going back and I'm going to do a reread. And I dug it. So um, okay, uh, the answer is dumping no, those later. No, okay. no, 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 no. I really <laughs> liked them a lot. Okay, I'm not. I'm not going to dump those. I'm giving it a shot. I'm not going to go much longer. I know there's a new Doctor Mirage coming out, so I'm really mm -hmm. pumped on that because I love Doctor Mirage and the um, punk lady that I showed you. Yeah, I liked both. The, I forgot her name. But it's a punk lady, right? <laughs> yeah so i um uh that's what i held 
Cool. Cool. Gabe, you want to go next, man? I, yeah. I'll show you guys what I got going on. Let's start out real quick with video games. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's a game Tyler. for, I believe, our, our guest's favorite system. It's a I'm Switch so game. It's a Ooh. Switch game. I'm so excited. Uh, it's... it's <laughs> Is he gonna go play? What's he gonna do? I don't know. I'm gonna wait for him to come back. You yeah, that's it. it. We got the same game. Look at that. Battle Battle Chief. Chief. Bros. That's right, man. The reason gotta... why Joe Madrera will never finish that comic book. I don't care because this game is great. <laughs> and we never expect them to finish it anyways, to be honest. <laughs> Probably not. What yeah. Thinking? Yeah. But I uh this is technically my second edition of this of this game because I actually speaking of Kickstarter, I kickstarted this game mm. when it first came out. I wanted it for the Switch, but then the Switch edition got super super delayed, so I just settled for the PS4 digital code. But I always wanted to have the Switch version so that way I can always have it with me, and it's a portable game. And you know, I got nothing better to do if I'm on an airplane or whatever the case might be. Again, I could just run through some dungeons and cool stuff like that. But this game is Joe Mad. Must have did everything in here besides probably the hardcore programming because he I, I believe he wrote it. The art is all based off of his art. It all, all the graphics and everything like that, all the character designs are straight out of the uh, Battle Chasers comic. It's beautiful looking. Um, so I got that. I also got uh, Pirates of Dark Water. Yes. Ooh. Love that DVD. series. So good. Yeah, it's such a good series. Too bad it, it ends and they, you uh, never get the ending. You uh, never know they get all the stones or all the uh, artifacts or what they were looking for. You should read my 18 fanfics. Oh, man. I'm just, <laughs> send me the link. <laughs> you won't believe the twist that series. <laughs> Share that file with me. Get me up on your Google Share Drive. I want to know what's going on. All right. Uh, so CGC's. This is glary. I don't know what to do about it. Sorry. It is 9.8. This is Witchblade number 10, the variant cover, signed by nice. uh, Mark Silvestri. Mm. Nice. Is, is that the first, the first appearance, appearance of Darkness? Yeah, yeah first Darkness, first, uh, first Jackie. So that's super cool. That was from our signing back in any, December. Any reason why? You just like you Darkness? Why, what? Yeah, yeah, Darkness I, is cool, dude. Okay. Garth Ennis really really cool. wrote that for a while. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, for Witchblade, that was all. That's a lot of Michael Turner art too. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what's his name? Francis Benepool. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. During Ron Mars era. And then I got uh, Batman Six. Oh, nice. Ooh. This is the uh, the sketch variant. This is signed by Jim Lee. Uh, Scott Alex Sinclair Williams. and Scott Williams. And that's awesome. Damn, that's a beautiful yeah, book. So cool. Nine point eight. Yeah. Did nine point eight or go home with you? Uh, no, I don't really care. Okay. But you know, it is what it is. Um, you you know you always go you always have the highest quality book and high grade you can. So, but on newer books like that, especially like like current books, like modern age books, anything like basically nineties and and going forward if you don't you have to get a 9 8 or it's it's crap when you're cgc yeah like, i was thinking of books like in the time 80s or the way or anything. things like that even some but of those really but you know it's good there's not that many books in the 80s that are like so yeah. valuable that you have to have them only in a 9 8 for them to be worth anything uh, you dude, could do like secret of, wars yeah. 8 you could do you know stuff like that even yeah, in, like, i was thinking you know, of seven yeah. five and eight and um, get some money right? out of it. not a like lot, issues but. like that yeah. What else you got? I saw some uh, trades. I got uh, Stupid Omar's Stupid Recommendation. of Stupid awesome. Mr. <laughs> awesome. It Kelly, is awesome. Kelly Thompson's Delivers. I haven't read Trade 2 yet. I don't know if that's out yet, but she, that, that book was awesome. I think, I think Trade 2 is out. Or is it's it? coming out. Maybe I, saw it, maybe I saw it on Well, it order. starts off with Gambit and Rogue, and oh, then no. Mr. and Mrs. X is the ongoing. Issue 12 oh, right. just came out, so... Issue 12 just came out. I think it was this week or last week. I have week. a fear. I think oh, that means it's going to get canceled. But it's good. Yeah. All it's right. Well, I'm going to really check good. it out. It I'm is read excellent. It for sure. I love the Terry Dotson art. I mean, I'm just I'm just a big fan of Gambit. And and I'm a big fan of Rogue. Like, those are my favorite characters, especially with the comics back then, along with the TV show. Like, you know, that was always, like, my couple. 
you know. All right, so answer me this. Did you hate Gambit's appearance? I was having a conversation with a buddy about Wolverine Origins, and I told him at the time that movie came out, even though I recognized it wasn't great, Mm -hmm. I was just stoked to see a live-action Gambit. I was too. Did you like that or hate it? I, I I love the idea of him being being Gambit. I, I think that actor uh, I forget what his name is. Taylor from Friday Night Lights. The guy from Friday Night Lights. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. uh, he played a perfect. Like he has a perfect look and like physique and attitude to to play Gambit. And I was happy to cast him in it. It just sucked that it wasn't the best version of Gambit that we could have had. Yeah, I agree. You know? I dug it, man. I dug it. Yeah, I'm in, and I was really looking forward to the uh, Gambit movie with uh uh chatham tatum like i was really hoping that was going to happen i was super disappointed when that fell off the schedule i thought that was going to be great i think chatham tatum is another guy that's just a, a perfect looking guy to play gambit he seemed like he really believed in that project like whenever yeah. he, they would interview him he really would talk about his love for i mean maybe he was just saying that i don't know everybody says that but right I but still it. yeah i mean most most of the time you don't hear that until the, the movies already been made and they're, they're promoting right they're never never in the pre pre-production side of things um, so yeah, I got that. Um, speaking of cool X Men shit, uh, I got X Men Blue, trade yeah. back volume zero. This has nothing to do with X Men Blue, like the current storyline, or nope. not the current, but the most recent <laughs> like comic. Even though it had the same font and you know title uh, artwork and everything, um, this is back. Uh, dude, I got this, and I got, I'm just gonna hold them both up. Fuck it. And then I got the uh, X Men Gold. That's oh, the one I'm surprised Ooh, you didn't man. own already. Yeah. I was. I don't know why I didn't own it either. Um, maybe I was holding up for an omnibus, but I know. I I know better than that. That's probably not going to happen anytime soon. And then watch tomorrow they announce it um, <laughs> again. Maybe. Uh, but X Men Gold is uh, is perfect for. No, no, it's X Men Blue. I'm sorry, X Men Blue is the one that's perfect because this one it starts at issue three fifty one, which is the one right after the trial of Gambit. So that goes right there. That's my – everybody has their Chris Claremont X-Men. You know, Chris Claremont, I'm, I'm 100% in there. He's the grandfather of the X-Men and whatnot. But this era X-Men is when I fell in love with the characters. It was right around this point. And then this is also, you know, Maggot shows up and you get Meryl. And at the time, I think the only reason I was reading X-Men at the time here, that I fell off after, like, um, Extinction Agenda or Executioner Song and stuff like that was going on. Uh, I fell off of X Men. I came back around this time just because I followed Joe Kelly over because Joe Kelly was writing Deadpool before this, and he left Deadpool and did X Men. So I followed over X Men, and then that's when I got introduced, like Maggot and all these other characters were going on as well. Um, but yeah, so these are super cool. This is my era of X Men. I'm happy to be able to flip through those again one day. Great art in here too. And we just bring this back around. Uh, just to show off the Carlos Pacheco art in here is really good. If I could just find it, find like a good example of it. Those uh, took place right after Operation Zero Tolerance. Yeah, Zero Tolerance is a great storyline too, man. Uh, so I think a lot of uh, the problems that those stories get is nobody knew how to write some of those characters because as soon as they were created, it was Scott Lobdell, right? He took off. Yep. Joe Kelly came on, but had to finish off the plot that uh, Lobdell started. And Siegel, is then he write? He wrote that horror, the the the, the Crow story with Chris Pachalo on art, right? Yeah, I believe that was him. But yeah, here's some good uh, Carlos Pacheco art. I love Carlos Pacheco back then. Oh yeah, that was my kind of stuff too. Yeah, I don't I don't like new Carlos Pacheco that much. No, I mean this is also the time when like Salvador La Roca was doing really good artwork as well. Like the X yeah. have really great art back then. Um, I know this it's cool and it's a stigma to to hate on uh, '90s comics, but there's some there's some gems, and this is this is a part of it when it comes down to the X Men stuff. All right, so there's that, uh, and then I finally picked up this bad boy, the uh, J. Michael Straczynski, yep, Spider Man Omnibus. This is top notch, great stuff. Um, I didn't open it yet. Sorry, everybody. Um, but the cover underneath the dust jacket is that really great two-page splash that John Romita Jr. did. Yeah, there you go, bud. So it's just, it's a beautiful cover underneath it as well. And this is just such a great era for, for Spider-Man. So that, The first volume is a great era for Spider-Man. 
We're gonna. I can't wait for one more days. day. I can't wait for one more day. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is also the appearances of a. Uh, if you really want to forget, go, that's that's a that's a sin's past the, story too. Yeah, yeah sin's the, past the, the is Gwen twenty Stacey, times worse. The Gwen Stacy baby stuff is right in here too. Gwen so. Stacy baby. Oh. Yeah. oh, I just threw up everywhere. Oh, man. <laughs> that's that um, blue Dr Pepper, Pepper man. Not yeah. the story. Not oh, the good story. Thing, good thing you just threw up uh, Papa so <laughs> 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 So gross. <laughs> All right, and that's what, that's what I got, man. I'm done. All right, I am going to quickly, quickly go through my haul because I know it's 9 o'clock and we still got to talk about books that are coming out this week. Okay. Um, I got this Muse because a good friend of mine told me to get it at hey. 11 o'clock comics. Shut uh, up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. It's not a show unless I give you shit. No, my good friend <laughs> Jeff told me to get this. This is the – oh, shit. Those are titties. Sorry. Hold on a second. <laughs> Damn it. That's why you told me to get this. Exactly. There we go. There we go. There's the classy pictures right here. Look at that gorgeous artwork. Terry Dotson. Mm-hmm. Look Very at Terry Dotson ankles. appearance on the show. Ankles. Uh, no, this is a beautiful, beautiful art. All right, here we go. Here's a little more scandalous. Here's a little more up Jess Bragg's alley. <laughs> here we go. Oh, no, my top came off. What will mm-hmm. I do? Uh, oh, no, this wet shirt is too wet to stay on. <laughs> Jess. But, oh, my God. Yeah, this is getting better. All right, yeah. So I don't know what the hell this story is about. Come on. How can I not buy this, though? This is beautiful. <laughs> now, this is the oversized format. This is the, you know, this is big those big ones i think there's a standard hardcover too that's a little cheaper but this is still available it's still online at in stock trades uh that's where i got a bunch of my stuff i got nail biter because thanks to my boy nash villains gave us a, told me the heads up that the dcps variants of nail biter hardcovers were on sale for i think 60 percent off or something they were 13 dollars each nice uh let's see then share marvel Shout out Ooh. to David. Gabriel sent me right. this for review. I did a quick overview on my channel, uh, which I'm sure I'll be happy to talk about that little thing sometime when I can. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, and then uh, our boy Kyle, my buddy Kyle, sent us some stuff that I'm going to be reviewing on my channel. So really quick, it's I know a lot of this stuff Jess already highly speaks of. Uh, you fuckers told me about coyotes, and I thought it was illegal immigrants turning into <laughs> werewolves. <laughs> I'm like, that premise sounds amazing. I'm in. Liars. Uh, Sp- Spider Geddon. This this one looks interesting. It's, I like the dimensions of this one by Roar Comics. This is Hap Haven. Really excited to read this. Moonshine. I think you guys have talked about Luis has talked about it. Uh, Jess uh, has talked about it. Uh, is he part of the 11 o'clock comics crew? I know you've uh, talked about this. Yeah. You love, like this? Love now, how, how many are there? Four of these, right? Two of them right now. So welcome back, two. us two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then mm-hmm. Southern Cross. Ooh, I haven't Got read that. Volume one, two. I'm very excited to read those. So first six issues here, and uh, next six issues there, and then I got this hardcover. I think you got this one too, right, Jess? I did. I just got that one. Yeah. Okay, I did too. It looks really. The premise is awesome. Then uh, this one here is Garth Ennis. This is Red Team, which I haven't read yet. This is Dynamite, Volume 1. Mm-hmm. And the big one that I... <laughs> this is so awesome. <laughs> this is G.I. Joe, America's Ooh. Elite World War Three Omnibus. This is awesome. This is, uh, did you just flip me for off? You. I did. I was <laughs> okay. Actually, that was meant for Jess. That was oh, meant okay. for Jess. <laughs> I hate people that notice things like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my coaches and priests never notice. <laughs> Fucker, I'll be a bench warmer, sure. Uh, no, this is awesome, man. Uh, this uh, unfortunately hasn't been reprinted. IDW just gave up on reprinting stories like this from. So, this is a DDP book, licensed by Hasbro. And IDW, IDW also gave up on their hardcovers of GI Joe, the IDW collection. So, that sucks. So I'm glad he found me this. This is awesome. So mad shout out to Kyle. He's a great guy. Yeah. And here's the cover. Was not expecting this at all, but he knows how much I love Joes and Transformers. And still looking for that Ghost Busters book volume two. And that is it. So look for reviews on my channel. Uh, and let's do the the weekly uh, ritual, right? All right. Lost yeah. both Gabe and 
Tyler. They're off playing they took Battle off. Chasers. <laughs> playing Battle Chasers. Yeah, they love Coyotes them. is still very good despite not being about that, Omar. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you, Freddie. Yeah, Coyotes is great. That sec the second volume is even better than the first volume. Ooh. So I can't wait to dive into those and start reviewing books. Got to get back into my reading groove. All right. I assume someone's waiting for me to do something. Well, I was. I usually Gabe is the one to do it, but yeah, oh, there, he is. there he is. There he is. What up, Dave? Hey. All right. Gabe, you want to share your screen so we can see what the books are coming out this week are? Let's do it. <laughs> we thought we lost you and Tyler because you guys went to go play Battle Chasers together. I don't see a problem with that. I wish I could. Well, after we go off air. Oh, yeah. All right. So let's take a look at this week's releases on May 29th. Starting off, as usual, we got Image <clears throat> Comics. They got Paradox Girl, Volume 1. I have no idea what this is. Why do and, I think uh, of Jess? I remember looking at that and... on my show, and I'm like, this reminds me of my friend Jess Bragg. Maybe it's what she's wearing. Maybe it's what she's wearing. Like I didn't even read the premise of the damn book. I just looked at the cover, and I'm like, Jess. Got it. <laughs> that is 50% off. <laughs> there you Just go. So wow. you know. I feel like Jess has a lot more influence Jess than he that. lets on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she made that happen. Everybody's like, give us Amazing Spider-Man for 50% off. Jess like, no, I think I'm going to make nope. a Paradox Girl first cycle 50% off. Yeah. <laughs> I have never and heard of this. The big one. one this week, I think this is like yes. oh, yeah, everybody day one. one. Yeah, this is a top-notch book for the week. With Saga Deluxe Hardcover Volume 3. That is not 50% off. Mm. What is that? that? Book 40, is, 42. 42. Is, oh. uh, that's their stopping point when they took a year off. So 54 is the last mm -hmm. issue, and we still don't have a 55 yet. So yep. Everybody last, will be caught up. Yeah, this is the last bit of Saga we're going to get for a little bit. I mean, dude, I, I haven't even read Volume 2 yet, to be honest. It's good. I know a lot of people were met, like, upset with the ending of this one because of the way that it ended, but you know, it's Brian K. Vaughn. So. Oh, is this so the same people who are watching Game of Thrones too? Jesus. Bro, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> it's a cliffhanger. That's sort of the point. And Dark Horse, we have uh, Death Orbit Volume 1, Department H, Omnibus Volume 1, God of War trade paperback. Grunt hardcover. This is the unpublished comics work of James. Oh, Marco. this is yes. uh, this is getting in. I'm buying this immediately. I already have this on order for myself. The only copy we're getting at the store is my copy. I ordered. Hmm. That That's sad. <laughs> Guy's amazing, man. Yeah, yeah. James Stokoe is he's a genius. He's one of my hugest influences. Orkstein, in huh? I gotta yeah, get Orkstein. that. Who's the publisher of Orkstein? Is it Image? It or was Image. It? it was Image, okay. yeah. I'll, I'll have to That's find Kind of like Dying on Dying in the Dead, where he did a bunch, and then he just stopped, and he was doing regular like uh, freelance comic book art to try and pay for the next issue, and it just, you know, it's, nothing's happened. We haven't seen uh, Orkstein in a long, long time. But it's great. I love this guy's coloring. This palette, this color palette that he that he created is just so original. Good stuff. All right, uh, and then we got pros and cons. IDW is coming out this week with oh my little pony. Sisters. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't control myself. That's my bad, guys. That's on me. It's on me. My bad. <laughs> so we got four sisters, uh, volume two, Judge Dread, Toxic, Life on the Moon. My Little Pony Nightmare Nights trade paperback and uh, Star Trek Next Generation Missions Continue. Okay. Uh, is that a mark? What? Yes, it is. 
Yeah, Mark Wade Flash. Mm-hmm. So we got uh, mm-hmm. DC Superhero Girls. This stuff is really good. I don't know if Omar, if you're, if you're a little yeah, my kids picked stuff. up the free comic book day thing, so I'll probably yeah. pick that up for them. Yeah, that stuff is yeah. great for little kids. Uh, Flash Volume Six from Mark Wade. Yes, sir. Yes, Green sir. Green Lanterns uh, Trade Paperback Volume Nine. This is the uh, Rebirth stuff still, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. Before Grant Morrison, I think that's the last volume before Grant Morrison takes over both books, or they compile it's, both books into one. There's just one Green Lantern book right now. Yeah. 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 Legend of the Dark Knight, Michael Golden. Yeah. I love that dude's artwork, but that is fifty percent off. I'll Ooh. keep my thoughts to myself. <laughs> uh, Raven, <laughs> daughter, daughter of darkness, volume two. And Shazam, the world's mightiest mortal hardcover. What that is this? What's in that? Fifty percent off. That's the 70s. Oh, it's the seventies yeah. adventure. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, went through eighteen. Oh hell, Dennis O'Neill, Kurt Schaffenberger, Berger, Schaffenberger, Dave Cockburn. I can say that. Vince Coletta. Yeah, there's some good stuff on here, man. The cover by Mike Cho is awesome. Yeah. It's a very Darwin Cook look to it. Yeah. That's interesting. 50% off, right? Jeff? Shazam, yeah. And then we have uh, here at Marvel. We've got Daredevil, Fearless Origins. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kirby is fantastic. Uh, over, it's the super oversized Fantastic Four it's hardcover. Big ass. Book edition. Yeah, actually, uh, gonna be big ass piece. book edition. That's what she's put down. Fuck off. So I, I do have a, edition. I do have something to share about these books really quick. Uh, so one of the questions I had for David is like, why did you guys bump up the price of that Jim Lee triple, double, oh, almost said triple X, uh, double XL, right? Because these books were 50 bucks. They were 50, now they're 100. Now they're 100. And I was a person that was bitching. I'm like, you guys are going to lose sales. And he's like, well, we kind of made a mistake the first few times. It costs a lot more than what we uh, we said, and so we were not making any money from them at all because of what we had to do with the art and stuff. And I'm like, damn it. Because <laughs> I really wanted that Jim Lee book. But anyway. Oh, you're still you're still getting it. You just have to oh, I'm, I'm it. totally going to get it. I can still bitch about it. Yeah. But it's not like you weren't going to get it or something. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> no, I'm getting it, too. But I did. I just wish I, I slid into that Amazon, fifty like, that deal that they had uh, when they thought it was $50 retail. So it was, yeah. like, selling for 31 I think. But the price mm-hmm. hike did uh, make me change the ordering I had on it. I think I had I think I had 12 on order. And then they bumped it to 100 and I was like, oh, I'll make that maybe 8 instead. Yeah, I mean, we're not kidding ourselves. This is Jim Lee on X-Men. Those – all yeah. these are out of print. In it's giant, going, it's giant going huge to size. You it's know, going to it's going to sell. It's going to be like those Here Come Galactus, that big old huge Galactus book. So, mm-hmm. um, Same with this, but this is like old Kirby Fantastic Four stuff on here. Yep. Are you picking this one up, Gabe? No, I'm not. No. Okay. Are these as big as the Artist Edition? or? Uh, depends on the size of the Artist Edition. It's a little bit bigger. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Or right about the same size. Like they're very close in our edition. All right. And then we got a timely, uh, I'm sorry, timely. Uh, Marvel Comics Timeless Tales. Marvel Visionaries trade paperback for uh, John Romita Sr. Punisher Volume 2. Speedball. Hell yeah, Speedball. The mass motherfucking <laughs> Marvel. Goddamn. What the hell? No, I'm looking at this. What the <laughs> What's in this shit? It's the Steve Ditko run, man. I know, but that it's is fifty percent off. Yeah, you know why? Because it's the mass motherfucking what Marvel. Dude, I love Speedball. Oh my god! Uh, you got uh, Amazing Speedball one through ten. You got the annual for his first appearance. The Marvel Age stuff. I'll have words with anybody that says otherwise. I'm looking at you, Mark Miller. Uh, that could better when he became Penance. Fuck that goth shit. That was great. What are you he had about? needles inside of his costume because he's like, I want to feel the pain. And yeah. I'm like, well, his can't. Father, those That's... kids got bloated up. He can't feel pain. That's what Speedball <laughs> does. He bounces it off. <laughs> that was that wasn't even that was uh, Paul Jenkins. That wasn't even Mark Miller's fault. Mark yeah. Miller just he's like, all right, just give me some buddy shit. Okay, that yeah, guy. Well, okay. The New Warriors, yeah, reality TV show. They blow up a school. All the kids get exploded. <laughs> <sighs> 
Even that was a in sigh and a grunt at the and same time. That's a real dark joke. Penis made it into a video game, too. Penis Not made it into ball. Annihilation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Annihilation Conquest. I think it was like Nova Issue 3 had Penance, and I'm like, shit. I guess I'll read it. I wish he was still Penance. No. Anyways. <laughs> All right, Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man Noir. Noir. Then we got Spider-Man versus Mysterio and uh, X Force Volume One. X Force is fifty percent off. I'm, I dug the three issues I read of X Force. The the art is okay, but the story is pretty solid. So Boom has Grand Abyss Hotel, whatever this is. It's a new original graphic novel, and then down here is the Geo and Omar section. <laughs> <laughs> there's the 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 goon is down there. There's there's goon. A bunch of yes, old crap goon. goon. Yeah. Right yeah, next to I married my best friend. I was going to say, it's so hard to up. take up for manga sometimes. Like, <laughs> times <laughs> like that. <laughs> I can't say anything. But see, Jess re- reads independent books like that too. So he can't talk either. Where's, the, where's my moon book that I wanted? The one by uh, J.M. DeMathis. Giant moon face. Don't what know. What was it called? I looked at it on my show. I can't remember what it's called. Moon something. All right. Not much else here. Moon face. Oh, yeah. Nope. Was that it? Moon face? Maybe. What's there was a book called Moon face, but it's a humanoids book. No, it wasn't humanoids. It was like, oh, and there's moon, moon bound. bound. No, I don't know what it, I thought it was supposed to come out last week. I, I know it got postponed, but oh, well. Cool. Thanks, man. And now Word. you all know what's 50% off. Right. Mm-hmm. Ta-da. All thanks to Bland Host 27. Shazam! Good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we've hauled, we've read, and we've previewed. We we mm-hmm. checked all our boxes, man. We did good. Good job. Check them all. That's right. And those 50% off values were brought to you courtesy of InStockTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off the list price. OmniBros code will be coming up soon, I bet, which will tack on whatever percentage they offer. Loyalty discounts tack on 2% to that. If you're in the United States and you order $50 or more books, free shipping which is amazing. Fabulous customer service. Fabulous packaging. That's at stocktrades.com. Bring. That's right. Nicely done. Beautiful, Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. I want that to be uh, my cell phone ringtone. There, there, uh, G, G. Scott has asked a couple of times. Uh, it's the Visionaries book of greatest hits. It was is, there a yeah. Marvel Visionaries book in there? It was uh, John Romita Sr. Yeah, so pretty much it's, they took like greatest the hit. best stuff that he did. That's it. I, I don't know why Marvel decided to bring it back because they didn't sell that well the first time. But maybe they're trying it again in trade paperback because they were hardcovers and then oh no, they did do trade. No, they were trades before, yeah, yeah. Uh, but good luck to them and and to you if you want to collect that kind of stuff. Uh, Felix, we don't know when we're going to get the discount code until about a day before you guys find out. So. We actually don't know. You'll know when we know. Yeah, you'll you'll know the day we know. Jess will buy his uh, books that are going out of print first, and then he will let the rest of us know. It's usually how that goes. Insider trading. Right? Yes, insider trading. <laughs> That's right. And then I'll flip them. <laughs> and he tells them to 11 o'clock comics. That's right. <laughs> all right. Is that it, guys? Is that all? We did our duty? That duty. He did it. How old are you people? <laughs> How old are you people? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, real quick, uh, yes. somebody's asking my my take my call on DC Black Label last night. Um, so Batman, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo are going to finish their run on Batman. I don't know if it's their run or if they're just like they're done doing Batman stories after this. Uh, it's called Batman: The Last Night on Earth. It's from the Black Label imprint from dc which doesn't mean anything it used to be like supposed to be edgy and then they showed a dick and then they decided not to be that edgy <laughs> uh but yeah i think it's gonna be great uh i think it's going to be a great send-off of that character from those creators 
So looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to that fucking omnibus finally coming out too. That Snyder Capullo Batman omnibus. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there you go. That's it. We're out of here. Gio, where can they find you on the internet? And what will you talk about when they find you? About nerdy stuff. A week in geekdom where I talk about nerdy stuff. Subscribe if you can. If not, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're so nice, man. Stop it. You make the rest of us look like shit. Except Tyler. Everybody likes Tyler. And Jess. Yeah, maybe just me and Gabe suck. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else is so friendly on this show. Gabe, where can they find you? Uh Instagram, Gabe Infinity Watch. Uh and on the Omnibus Collectors Facebook group as well. So and the uncanny omar where can they find you uh you can find me hanging out on my channel called near mid condition where i'll be checking out my muse book and you should too that oversized art and tomorrow we are talking about craven's last hunt and jess is joining us did you read that jess i'm joining you yeah (laughs) you dumb bastard did you forget <laughs> Jesus Christ. Who, I don't have wow, that. You guys came to the same show today. <laughs> I don't have that epic though. Oh. I, all I have is the uh, the premiere of uh, Craven's Last Sound. I don't have that epic. You don't need You're the good. epic. You just need that you six issues, it. man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that epic more than I like the hardcover that came out about the same time. Yeah, I mean the, the epic is awesome because it, has, it collects a bunch of books, but yeah, yeah, it's just it's just the six issues. It's in that oversized hardcover. I'd I'd love to be on, but I gotta pick up my wife from the airport at that time. I'm okay, sorry. Okay. I, That's I would okay. love to be on. Next time I will write it into your calendar. <laughs> Even if it was in my calendar, I'd still have to pick up my wife at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh so I take back what I said. Jess is not a good human being. He's a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and a liar. And his wife is more important than Omar's show. Oh, he's texting his wife he later about the whole fucking Kickstarters he's kicking off. <laughs> macaroni grill. <laughs> Holy smoke. Uh, and Tyler, are you ever going to be making videos again, buddy? Well, I'm just too darn busy trying to give stuff away in the Facebook group. I made this nice giveaway post, and no one seems to want to win. You're, so, you you're, know, hey man, I take it back. You're a piece of shit. Whenever that off. finishes <laughs> up, then we're gonna we're gonna get back to it. That thing has like seven thousand posts on it. What the fuck? Oh, maybe one of these days. Maybe one of these days. <laughs> but not today. <laughs> so many people got excited. I know that was sad. You're such a mean person. <laughs> You can find me, Omnidog, on Omnidog's Vault on YouTube and Omnidog's underscore Vault on Instagram. So, on behalf of the Omni Bros and our sponsor, In Stock Trades, I say to you, thank you to the chat. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. And peace and love. Peace and love. Bye, everybody. Bye.